cheeks are a sign of youth, health, and vitality. For thousands of years, women have looked for ways to bring an attractive flesh to their complexion using crushed berries, beets, or modern day blush. As popular as a hint of red on the cheeks may be, persistent redness can be a sign of the chronic inflammatory skin disease, rosacea. As of today, rosacea is estimated to affect at least 16 million people in the United States and approximately 45 million worldwide. In Europe, up to 10% of the population has rosacea. But this isn't to say it hasn't been around for centuries. In fact, there are many accounts of facial redness dating back many centuries. In art, literature, and medical books, rosacea was a well-known condition and commonly attributed to excessive consumption of alcohol. Because it commonly affects those of Northern European background, it has even been referred to as the curse of the Celts. Fast forward a few centuries, and we are still trying to comprehend and treat this very common but poorly understood disease. Because so many people are unfamiliar with the disorder and often ignore signals, the number of people susceptible to rosacea may even be higher. Recognizing the symptoms early will prevent the disease from causing major skin damage. Rosacea cannot be cured yet, but it can be managed and gaining this knowledge will lead to more satisfied and educated clients. Redness on the cheeks, nose, chin, or forehead. Small visible blood vessels on the face. Bumps or pimples on the face. Watery or irritated eyes. These are all symptoms that can tell someone they may have rosacea. Other characteristics may also help identify the disease in some people. Rosacea mainly affects individuals between 30 and 50 years of age. There may be a genetic predisposition since many people report a family history. Women suffer more commonly than men, but men are more severely affected. Rosacea is more common in light-skinned individuals, those of Fitzpatrick scale 1 and 2, although it can affect any skin color. However, rosacea can be difficult to diagnose on darker skin due to the fact that it is more difficult to see the visible redness and capillaries. Since rosacea presents acne-like bumps and pimples, it can be very difficult, even for dermatologists, to differentiate it from acne. Let's take a look at the major differences between the two. Rosacea is an inflammatory and vascular disorder. Acne vulgaris is a disease of the pilosebaceous unit. Acne is common in teenagers, whereas rosacea is commonly an adult disease, which is generally restricted to the nose, cheeks, chin, and forehead. Acne can show up anywhere on the face and body. Papules are raised lesions that occur very similarly in acne. Unlike acne, rosacea papules do not come from bacteria. These lesions are caused by flushing. Rosacea does not present with blackheads that are seen with acne. Rosacea usually begins with flushing, leading to persistent redness. Acneic skin doesn't have the broad redness and visible capillaries of rosacea. To make matters worse, rosacea can coexist with acne. Most acne treatments are too harsh for the sensitive rosacea skin, so it is very important to differentiate the two before starting a skincare regimen. The National Rosacea Society Expert Committee developed a classification system for the subtypes of rosacea to aid clinicians in the diagnosis and treatment of the disorder. The four main subtypes of rosacea are erythematotelangiectatic rosacea, papular rosacea, phimatous rosacea, and ocular rosacea. Erythematotelangiectatic rosacea is mainly characterized by flushing and persistent redness. The appearance of telangiectasias is common but not essential for a diagnosis of this subtype. Telangiectasias are small, dilated blood vessels near the surface of the skin that are unable to constrict back to normal levels so they remain slightly dilated and visible through the skin surface. Clients often complain of sensitivity, itching, burning, and a lower tolerance to skincare products. This type tends to appear more on sun-exposed areas, particularly the central portion of the face. 
papular pustular rosacea is also characterized by persistent redness, but with the addition of inflammatory papules or pustules, or both. Bacteria, as in acne, do not cause these bumps and pimples. Instead, they are caused by vascular flushing in areas surrounding sebaceous glands. Over time, flushing results in the leakage of inflammatory cells out of the blood vessels and into dermal skin. These inflammatory cells then migrate toward the sebaceous gland, or pore, resulting in inflammatory pustules, which can last for days. Since rosacea and acne can occur at the same time, such people may have comedones as well as papules and pustules of rosacea. Phymatous rosacea occurs when blood vessels become leaky and the lymph cannot be removed fast enough. As the tissues become more swollen and sebaceous glands enlarged on the cheeks and nose, the skin becomes coarse, thickened, and irregular. The most common form is called rhinophoma, where tissues of the nose region become enlarged. This used to be known as whiskey nose or gin blossom because of the misconceptions of its association with alcohol use. Alcohol itself does not cause this form of rosacea, but it can worsen symptoms. Ocular rosacea affects the eyes and eyelids. It is typically underestimated as many people believe it is simply dry eyes or allergies causing the redness. These people have feelings of burning or grittiness in the eyes bloodshot eyes, or inflamed and swollen eyelids. So to summarize, the four main subtypes are characterized by redness and visible blood vessels, bumps and pimples, skin thickening, and irritated eyes. Let's look at some of the current theories behind what's causing this complicated disease. One single cause of rosacea is not yet defined, which is why the disease is not yet curable, but is treatable. Most likely, there is no single cause, but involves different biological mechanisms, such as having an abnormal vascular reactivity, immune response to microorganisms, and abnormal innate immunity. Redness is a hallmark of rosacea skin. People with rosacea still have the capacity to flush or blush in response to feeling nervous or excited. However, their face already appears flushed compared to normal people. For some reason, the blood vessels of the face are easily dilated and remain that way for longer periods of time than normal skin. Certain microorganisms, such as demodex mites, are normally found in the central facial region. In rosacea skin, some reports say these mites are more numerous. Rosacea patients tend to have an immune or allergic response to these mites, which could lead to inflammatory lesions. However, mites are also present in healthy adults, meaning that rosacea cannot solely be attributed to their presence. So if poor circulation and increased mites are a result of having rosacea, is there anything that might actually cause the development of rosacea? Recent scientific studies suggest that people who develop rosacea may have an abnormal immune system to begin with. Your body has an arsenal of natural antimicrobials that act quickly to kill microbes like bacteria, fungi, and viruses. One of these substances is called catholicidin, and it plays a major role in the development of rosacea. In normal skin, catholicidin is cut into a smaller peptide called LL37 by an enzyme called stridium corneum triptych enzyme, or SCTE for short. This peptide is further cut up by enzymes into even smaller forms, which have the necessary antimicrobial and pro-inflammatory properties of a properly working immune system. In rosacea skin, this process goes haywire. For some reason, rosacea skin appears to have more catholicidin and more SCTE than normal skin. This causes too much of the pro-inflammatory peptides to be made, causing chronic inflammation. So, chronic inflammation underlies the overactive immune response seen in rosacea skin. Because this skin is overly reactive, it is crucial to control some of the triggers of a rosacea flare-up. In general, you want to avoid excess heat or anything that will cause your blood vessels to dilate if you have rosacea. Sun exposure is the most common factor that triggers rosacea. UV rays can deeply penetrate the skin, even into the dermal layers. 
It can increase blood flow to the surface of the skin and weaken capillary walls, worsening the redness of rosacea skin. Sun protection is crucial. Stress is also a primary trigger for rosacea. Luckily, using stress management techniques can successfully reduce flare-ups. Hot weather, humidity, cold, and wind have all been known to aggravate rosacea for many individuals. Shield your skin against the elements. While exercise may be a part of a healthy lifestyle, it may also trigger a rosacea flare-up. Moderation is key. Try exercising for shorter, more frequent intervals, and when outdoors, choose early morning or early evening hours when it's cooler. Alcohol has long been known to trigger flare-ups of rosacea. If it causes excess flushing, avoid drinking to reduce redness. Hot soup or coffee, spicy nachos, a glass of wine, no matter how appetizing they sound, these foods and beverages cause excess heat in the body. So watch your diet to avoid flare-ups. Rosacea sufferers can use a variety of skincare products to their advantage, but steer clear of ingredients that sting, burn, or cause facial redness. Avoid artificial colors and fragrances. You may also want to modify your approach to cleansing and bathing by avoiding hot water, hot tubs, and saunas. Avoid any rough washcloths, loofahs, brushes, and sponges. Let your face air dry before applying any medication or skincare products. For shaving, use an electric shaver rather than a blade to minimize irritation. Overall, you want to avoid using abrasive tools or products on rosacea skin. There are many treatment options available for a person with rosacea. Topical antibiotics are widely used to reduce the redness, papules, and pustules. Tetracyclines are a class of antibiotic drugs with anti-inflammatory activity. Oral antibiotics are also effective at treating some of the symptoms of rosacea, but may require a prolonged course of months, even years, before you see results. Sulfur and benzoyl peroxide can help clear papules and pustules if the epidermal barrier is not defective. But be aware, benzoyl peroxide can irritate or even burn sensitive skin. Isotretinoin is slower to act than antibiotics, but is long-lasting. This retinoid can help reduce papules, pustules, erythema, and telangiectasias. Because it can pose a pregnancy risk, doctors must carefully monitor their patients. The little dilated blood vessels, or telangiectasias, often don't respond well to either oral or topical therapy, and are best treated with laser and light-based therapies. Laser and light therapies can be effective at reducing the appearance of visible capillaries and redness. Short and long pulsed dye lasers heat capillary walls up to 70 degrees, damaging them and causing them to be absorbed by the body's natural defense mechanism. IPL is also a treatment that works similarly to decrease the appearance of blood vessels. Again, light energy destroys dilated blood vessels, improving appearance over time. However, these treatments do not treat the root cause of rosacea, simply one of the symptoms. Carbon dioxide lasers, surgery, and dermabrasion can contour skin deformed by phimatous rosacea with minimal scarring. Although there are many medical treatment options, choosing the right one can take time. Home care is essential when it comes to managing this disease. The right skin care regimen will prevent flare-ups and keep the skin calm and cool. It's important to seek out ingredients like these that will aid in reducing inflammation and comfort the skin. Remember, physical sunscreens like titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are best for an irritated, sensitized skin. Rosacea is a complicated skin disease that involves the vascular system, the immune system, and environmental factors. Understanding how to identify the warning signals of rosacea, along with having the tools to cool and comfort the skin, will help you better manage your client's skin in and out of the treatment room. One of the 
the most critical aspects of treating a client with rosacea is to begin with a thorough consultation. This is one of the best tools for helping to determine what trigger factors may be exacerbating your client's rosacea. Your consultation will really help you to determine your treatment approach as well as your home care recommendations. Some key areas to focus on when performing your consultation are your client's age, stress levels, home care routine, diet, lifestyle, as well as times they've actually experienced flushing on the skin, as this can also determine what factors may be influencing their symptoms. You can start by incorporating the benefits of aromatherapy and deep inhalation therapy, and then follow through with reflexology which is an effective way of helping to target all the vital organs and endocrine glands in the body, bringing about a homeostatic balance, which helps to induce a calmer, more relaxed state of being. Heat is another trigger factor for a client with rosacea, so why not try cool the body's core temperature by simply placing some cool marble stones in your client's hands. With the client effectively relaxed and the comfort levels optimized before you even begin the treatment, you've effectively laid down the foundation for achieving the best possible results for a skin type that's been affected by rosacea. When designing your treatment plan for rosacea, especially when treating the client for the first time, you'll really want to adhere to something we call the less rule here at IDI. Try to minimize the amount of time that you spend on the skin to 45 minutes. It's also advisable to avoid any amounts of steam or steam towels on the skin, as this tends to generate too much heat. Try to minimize also the number of formulas that you're using on the skin to approximately five to seven products, and reduce the amount of friction on the skin by avoiding stimulating massage, coarse abrasive exfoliants, or even the brush machine application. By adhering to these simple guidelines, you'll ensure that you don't overstimulate the skin or cause any adverse reactions. When considering what product to use when cleansing a rosacea skin, consider using a pH balanced, fragrance and sulfate free formulation that contains calming, soothing, anti-inflammatory ingredients such as raspberry, panthenol and cucumber. Alternatively, you can cleanse the skin with a clinical grade of colloidal oatmeal blended with a water-soluble plant-based cleansing oil that has phenomenal anti-inflammatory properties while helping to restore the skin's barrier function. You may consider using a cool compress to help remove any residual cleanser as traditional sponges or steam towels may be too stimulating for the skin. When analyzing the skin, some of the most common signs to look out for are telangiectasia, transient or persistent flushing on the skin, heat, stinging or burning sensations, and papules. These are not to be confused with the acne papules and pustules. The papules found on a rosacea skin manifest as a result of inflammation and not as a result of excess oil flow, bacteria, or retention hyperkeratosis. Also look out for possible fluid and puffiness, poor barrier function, and possible dry, flaky patches. During the exfoliation phase, you'd also try to avoid any abrasive or mechanical exfoliants, any low pH formulations. However, if it's the first time you're treating a client, you may want to use an enzyme-based exfoliant with paypane or bromelain from pineapple and papaya in a hydrating gel base. This will help smooth over the skin texture while hydrating the skin and ensuring better penetration of some of the more calming anti-inflammatory ingredients in the mask phase of the treatment. In the massage step of the treatment, your objective is to try and reduce the client's stress levels while utilizing soothing massage techniques. You can combine the use of a blend of soothing aromatherapy oils with some additional hydrating, calming actives such as sodium hyaluronic, avocado, as well as calming peptides. There are a variety of masks that you can use on this kind of skin, but one of the most effective would be a clinical grade of clinical colloidal oatmeal blended into a hydrating, cooling gel-based mask. The oatmeal has a very high yield of beta-glucan, which is amazing and has an anti-itch property which helps to reduce erythema on the skin and stimulate fibroblast activity. 
When performing the mask stage of the treatment, you may want to consider using antiphoresis, as this will not only assist with better penetration of the active ingredients used during the massage and the mask phase, but will also help to facilitate vasoconstriction of the dilated blood vessels, helping to reduce that redness and calm and soothe the skin, reducing itch as well as irritation. The best way to avoid undoing all your hard work when removing your mask is to wet the skin with a calming blend of botanicals and a Dr. Lucas pulverizer. Once this is done, loosen the mask further with wet hands and gentle effleurage technique, then gently remove the formula with a cool compress. In the final stages of your treatment, you'll want to seal in the moisture and continue to calm the skin while protecting it from the UV radiation. Some useful ingredients to incorporate in this final stage of your treatment would be magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which is a more stable form and far less acidic form of ascorbic acid. This is perfect for a client that suffers from rosacea, as it can help strengthen the collagen fibers in those weakened capillary networks of the skin. Broad Spectrum Physical SPA for 30 provides optimum protection from the sun's UV rays without causing any inflammation. Dimethicone helps to restore and replenish the barrier function of the skin. Tinted earth minerals are a great non-irritating way to help camouflage the underlying redness, which can often be one of the hallmarks of rosacea. Also look out for bar mint, coneflower, grapeseed, which create a great synergy of calming, soothing antioxidants that help to minimize inflammation. Thank you for joining us today. To find out more about rosacea and sensitive skin, log on to dermalinstitute.com. To get a copy of our exclusive booklet for this webisode, click on the link provided.